Hi, and welcome to Module 4 of Video Lecture 2. After the previous ones that are fairly long, you'd be relieved to know this is a very short one just to, just to wrap up the last few um, issues involving functions that we're going to talk about. Um, first, there's another class of functions that it's useful to know about. It's not a function per se that you can name, um, but it's a class of functions that often come up in political science, and they're known as piecewise functions. And a piecewise function is defined in pieces. So it's defined differently on different parts of its domain. So for instance, you can make a function like this, f of x, and the curly brace in the left means um, it's going to tell you there's a longer definition here. It could be x for, or let's say x squared for x less than or equal to 2 but um, log of x for x greater than 2. So we could draw that, and here's 2, and we could say that it's going up like x squared until 2, um, but now it's going to jump down um, and do this past 2. So this is a piecewise function. Um, it's defined this way because there's something special supposedly happening at 2 in this case that changes the outcome. And here technically we should have a little circle over here. And I'll explain what that means in a, momentarily. Um, but here it's defined piecewise because we believe that be some fundamental behavior changes at a particular point. And the notation, you can have a 4 here, you could have put a colon instead of the 4, lots of different ways. Um, but this notation means it's defined differently on different parts of the domain. So it's a piecewise function, it's defined piecewise. Um, they're used, again, primarily when you, have, when you have some belief that behavior changes abruptly in some fashion before and after a certain point. There's sort of a discontinuity in behavior. Discontinuity, in English, means lack of continuity. Continuity is actually an incredibly important characteristic of functions that we should talk about now. Um, a continuous function simply put, is one you can draw without removing your pen from the paper. Or in this case, your stylus from your tablet. So this function is continuous. This one is not. I had to draw it up here, and then stop, pull my pen up, and put the circle down there. The circle means, because a function can only have a single value at a single point in the domain, at 2, I can only have one value. I defined it to be x squared at that point. so. At 2, up here, it's got to be 4, and not the log of 2. So the circle here means at the value of 2, it's open. It doesn't actually reach that point. Um, and the circle indicates that it is not that value at 2 exactly. It's that value close to 2, but at 2 is not that value at all. Um, a continuous function, as I said, is one that which you could draw without taking your pen from the paper. Another way of looking at it is I can get arbitrarily close in both dimensions at once. So if I decide I want to get really close between any two points, say here and here, I can get just as close here and here. Um, for a continuous function, that's true. I can get close in both dimensions at once. For a discontinuous function, that might not be true. I can't get any closer than those two over there. This is an incredibly sloppy way of doing this. What I'm trying to do is hand wave through what's called the epsilon delta definition of continuity. It's provided in a footnote in the textbook. Um, footnotes in the textbook generally relate to things that are interesting and formally correct, but not necessarily positively disposed to in introducing intuition into your lives. So I'm not going to go through this in this video lecture. But the idea is. A continuous function is one in which the points are next to each other or close in both dimensions. A close point in the y-axis is also a couple of close points in the um, x-axis. There's no jumps. Um, no jumps, by the way, is a better way, is a, it's the simplest possible way of saying continuous. A continuous function has no jumps. Um, continuous functions are essential to optimization. Not essential, but very much easier. They make things very much easier. So 
most things in political science are continuous. All the functions I showed you before, the log and the exponential and the polynomials and so on, they're all continuous on their domains. Um, okay. Speak a little more about domains. Again, this is a grab bag lecture, grab bag module. Um, polynomials have domains, whatever you want them to be, um, as do exponentials, as do, um, well, there's not, I mean, as do uh, sines and cosines, but um, not everything does. The um, um, logs, for instance, you mentioned earlier, Either way, it only have a domain for x greater than zero. So the domain of these is the are the positive row numbers. Um, the um, radicals, so square roots and stuff, have domains greater than or equal to zero. Now, if you want to use complex numbers, I mentioned earlier, you can take the square root of negative numbers. They produce imaginary numbers. That doesn't come up almost ever in political science, so we're not going to deal with that. Um, although it's fun to say you have imaginary numbers. Um, boom. Okay. So those are radicals. Um, those are domains of radicals. These are domains of logs. Sometimes domains are, const are constricted um, by the function that you have. Sometimes they're not. In any case, people don't usually specify the domains of common functions because they're used to just knowing what they are. But you can do so formally. And more complicated functions, you must specify the domain. However, all these functions are continuous. The piecewise function we mentioned is not continuous. Um, there are other, other non-continuous functions we will deal with. So that's most of this lecture already, um, this module already. The last thing I want to mention are, is a little bit more about why you pick these functions. I mentioned already that for this linear function here, the a is the slope of the line, and for this affine function, it's still a slope of the line. This is the intercept. The slope of the line is, some, is in some ways the rate of change, the marginal rate of change. So for each unit I change x, the slope tells me how much I change y. It gives me the rate of change in y with x. Um, when we have other polynomials, we can have similar definitions. Here, A now is sort of like, is the rate of change in the rate of change. <laughs> um, so let's like an acceleration. It's how fast the rate of change is changing itself. By changing these parameters, you change the shape of the function, and you also change the meaning of the function, which is important because the whole point of functions, again, is to represent something in reality. And if you change, the parameters, you change what you're representing, and when you change what you're representing, you change the meaning of your of your model and your function, and obviously you want to have the appropriate meaning for your substantive example. So be careful when you use these things to make sure that your functional forms match the meaning that you're trying to convey, match the substance of your issue. Um, and that's really it. So the next, so that was a short, shorter module to finish off on um, on functions. Next couple of modules have been relations. Relations are a more general um, concept than functions. They're used much less often though, primarily in understanding choice, decision theory, and social choice theory. So we'll discuss those in a couple lectures um, pretty briefly. Thank you.